last presentation of this session will be by Pankaj Koperde on Know Your Dragons Odonata. That is dragonflies and damselflies, their biology, behavior and conservation in urban landscape. Dr. Pankaj Koperde is an evolutionary ecologist primarily driven by his interest in biodiversity conservation and sustainability. He is a co-founder of Dragonfly South Asia, a citizen science fueled community. He is a TEDx speaker, Prakriti Fellow, IUCN contributor and a published Marathi writer. He was featured as Seavis Magazine's Top 10 Rising Stars of Conservation in India in 2017. He has conducted over a decade long research on odonates and owls. Also, he is associated with MIT World Peace University and Abbasaheb Garwari College. Okay, so Gulab Jamun has already done its work. <laughs> so I thought to, you know, just walk around on the platform. And that was also a suggestion given by one of the participants. So I think that will help you. So I'm not going to really talk about the landscape architecture part of it, but I'll talk about only a one single faunal component called dragonflies. And uh, I think uh, we all know about dragonflies. We have seen them, some of them, some of you might have played with them, right? As a kid, probably you tied a knot to the dragonfly and tried to flew it, but it already flows, it already flies, right? It has wings. So we'll just go through uh, ordinate biology and probably you can, I'll be more than happy if you could incorporate some of these aspects when you next time design a certain landscape. Okay. Well, dragonflies everywhere and even the Marvel comic universe uh, has taken up as a superhero, that's dragonfly. We can see them in jewelry, in our t-shirt design and you know, uh, many accessories that you can see. In the art form, they're there, sometimes even on our napkins. And yes, in an art entertainment, this is the clip from Friends, and you can see a dragonfly out here. That's the dragonfly out there in Ross's apartment. <laughs> so it means they're everywhere, they're in culture, and also you can see them around, right? Well, dragonflies, there is tremendous variety in dragonflies. In India alone, we have 495 species of dragonflies, and we see around 70 species in Pune. In Maharashtra, we have around 133 species. So we have a very good chunk of dragonflies to think of when you talk about the landscape interventions. And you can see that they're really colorful. They're beautifully colored animals. And uh, you can see that within the dragonflies, we have two groups called dragonfly and damselfly. So the dragonflies are one of the robust ones. So this one is a dragonfly. And this is, the, this is how they look. And that's a damselfly, OK? So you can see the differences in their body structure and so on. And um, since I, I uh, have this very strong background of evolutionary biology, I always talk about evolution when I talk about any faunal element. Dragonflies, uh, you know, diverged around 360 million years ago. So one million is 10 raised to six. So you can imagine when was this. So this is 300 million years ago, and this was the first group of insects that took flight. They were the first uh, you know, conqueror of the aerial space. So it means that they have a very strong, uh, you know, evolutionary information attached with them. And it also means that the climate has changed over the time. And there has been several mass extinctions when a lot of fauna or a lot of biodiversity on the earth basically decreased in number very drastically. And they have gone through this. Okay. So uh, some of you earlier said that uh, your clients don't want your dragonflies to be there. Right? And probably they will say this if they were living in Carboniferous era, because dragonflies were really huge at that time. But now we have very tiny dragonflies, and since I showed you that they really look beautiful, you can convince your client next time that you should have more dragonflies in your landscape. So I would definitely not want to be that guy, but that was the stuff happening in Carboniferous era. So they, they contain a lot of evolutionary information. And uh, as you can see in this graph, the x-axis shows uh, millions of years. So this is basically starting from zero. So this is today, and we are going back in time. And on the y-axis, you can see number of families, or just let's say the diversity, OK? So you can see that there are certain peaks, and there are certain troughs. So those are the areas where the mass extinctions have happened. 
And since our dragonfly started around 300 million years ago, so they will be probably somewhere here, and then now we are here. So they have encountered at least three mass extinctions. Okay, so it means they are surviving through drastic climatic fluctuations, and we have entered into the sixth mass extinction on the Earth, and which is ongoing, and that is called Anthropocene. We live in an era which is dominated by humans, and that's why we are discussing urban landscapes. Ecological Armageddon is what is it called, and that has been experimentally shown. Around 75% of insects have been declined, and this is this is the, this is the case from Germany. Okay, so this was a long-term monitoring program that they had. They did it for 25 years, and they demonstrated that there has been a drastic decline in insect population in protected areas. So you can expect that in urban areas, which are actually highly paced, uh, you know, uh, land cover changes happening in the urban uh, urban scape. So at those areas, these declines would be even more drastic, right? And this has been published. <coughs> so dragonflies are intimately connected with their freshwater habitats. And uh, we know that their decline also is correlated with the degradation of habitat or declining habitat that they have. In Pune, we have you know, variety, types, uh, variety of types of uh, freshwater habitat. We have streams, we have, uh, re we have a river, and we also have you know, ponds and lakes, and you know, sometimes temporary puddles are also formed. So these are the kind of habitats that dragonfly live in. And probably we'll also see that uh, how does that really affect uh, in their, how does that really impact on their biodiversity? So uh, there has been some work done on dragonflies of Pune earlier, and this dates back to 1924, 1933, around that time, when uh, this one od odontologist called Fraser was looking for dragonflies everywhere, and he did some exploratory work in Pune. Then um, one person from ZSI, Zoological Survey of India, uh, in 1996, he also revised these lists and came up with a checklist of dragonflies from the Pune region. And both these studies together, they calculated around 70 species that occur in Pune. So after that, there was a huge gap, and nobody really studied dragonflies. Nobody were really interested in understanding how their dynamics would work. And uh, in 2013, Kulkarni and Subramaniam, they published a paper in which uh, you know, they had revised the dragonfly list from certain, uh, certain number of sites. These were 12 sites. And they had taken some sites which were in urban scape, some sites which were for forest scape and so on. And they had also done slightly, you know, some sort of comparison. It was not uh, statistically very strong, but they could, found, uh, they could get some results. And they suspected that there has been a tremendous decline in the number of species that you see in Pune, if you compare it from the old data. And that decline was 31% of species decline. So if you have 100 species living in 1930s, so today you have 70 species. So that is how it uh, directly reflects. And they recommended that whatever number of species are left with, for them, you need refuge areas within the urban scape. And that can be created if you increase the urban green space. And you can also, if you conserve the wetlands within the city. <clears throat> so after this, again, there was uh, no lack of research. There was nobody really taking up initiative. Uh, and Dr. Subramaniam, he was working with ZSI Pune, and uh, he got a transfer order, so he left ZSI and he went to some other place. So again, there was no initiative taken, and we followed up on his footstep. And I basically started a long-term monitoring program, and that's, you can call that as Odonets of Pune. <clears throat> so uh, in the phase one, this was, again, a self-funded project, and uh, I did it all alone. Um, so basically, this was uh, like a one single year's monitoring where I, in, I monitored seasons and the species richness and so on in six sites across Pune. And uh, two of the sites were urban gardens. One of them was Pula Deshpande Uddan from uh, Singhagad Road. And the second one was Veer Savarkar Uddan from Pimpri Chinswara. Both these gardens have streams and lakes inside them. So, you know, dragonflies would be around. So, uh, from this study, I recorded around 44 species of dragonflies from Pune. And I added one new species to the Pune's checklist, that's this violet striped blue dart. And if you come to field with me, 
you will really appreciate this species. You can see it in Panchet and in Khadakwasala Reservoir. Uh, so we also established a relation that between dragonflies and damselflies, these two taxa, damselflies are more sensitive to habitat changes. Yeah. So, uh, and uh, the Veer Savarkar Uddyan was ha also turned out to be one of the highly diverse locality, which is also urban garden. We followed up with that project and uh, later on we got grants from uh, International Dragonfly Fund and uh, also we ran a crowd crowdfunding campaign on bid giving and we you know, accumulated some money and then again did another one year program in which uh, this was a more sophisticated, more systematic work where we sampled only Mula River across an urbanization gradient starting from Mulshi to the Koregao Park which is the RTO which is the you know, last locality. So as you enter from Mulshi and if you follow the river till the Koregao Park, you will find that uh, the overall built up area changes. It is you know more built up here, more polluted uh, areas in Koregao Park as compared to Mulshi. So we were expecting that all those unique endemic species of dragonflies would be more clustered towards Mulshi and less towards Koregao Park, right? <clears throat> and this is just a site comparison. So one of the sites was Aund and probably you might have uh, passed by this uh, bridge uh, this is uh, the Aund and that's Mulshi. So Mulshi looks pretty much, you know, much cleaner than Aund. So here we not only did the adult odonates, adult odonates are the ones that fly, so you can see them very easily, but there are odonates also underwater and they are in the larval stages. So it was also necessary to count them. So we basically combined the adult odonate sampling and also the larval sampling. So that's me counting adult odonates in a tree sorry, uh, uh, larval odonates on a, in a tray and there is, that's my student who is looking for adult odonates in the air. And that's typically how we would get. We would sort all the garbage in a tray and then we'll get these beautiful larvae. So uh, from this, this project we came up with again uh, 41 species and out of the 41 species, six species we recorded only from the larval sampling. So if we hadn't done the larval sampling, we wouldn't have got those six species. And out of the six species from the larval sampling, five are new to Pune. Okay, so it means that there is a lot of life underwater, which is generally undersampled. Okay, so you can see that uh, one of them is Macromia species. Now, probably you won't understand the context of this, but for an odonatologist, that will be like a woo moment. And then there is river helio heliodor and saffron face blue dart. So among these two, river heliodor is generally found in the clearer water and the saffron face blue dart is generally found in polluted water. So just to show you a snippet of how the Pune's odonata would look like, and these are the commonest species that you can encounter in on any pond as such. Uh, so we can go into details you know, uh, in a, on a personal interaction maybe later. So what it means, these two projects combined together, what it really means you know, for the Pune as a, or any urban scape, it basically means that urbanization would bring species losses and probably that could also reflect into local extension of species. The uniqueness or exclusivity of species would increase because you will have more urban odonates accumulating in urban areas and non-urban odonates accumulating in non-urban areas. Okay, so it is disproportionate uh, increase in certain, uh, uh, certain uh, fauna. But urban gardens like Veer Savarkar Uddyan or Puladesh Pandey Uddyan, which is basically you know, inspired by Japanese design. And these are the, these are the places where you can have a refuge kind of uh, environment created for the non-urban counterparts of the odonates. Urban odonates are going to be there. We want to bring non-urban odonates to the urban area so that they can populate, they can colonize these areas again. And it will be sort of a restoration. So just to give you examples of gardens, we have Puladesh Pandey Uddan, about which I'm talking, then Veer Savarkar Uddan, and we also have Nandir city eco park. So these are the areas where uh, the stream and the pond element have been mixed up. And you know, for dragonflies to appear in the sky, there has to be a larval stage, they need water. And the water also need to have all the abiotic and biotic elements in it. You, you are having, if you are having very, very clean water, that does not really bring that dragonfly larvae, okay. Uh, so if you are cleaning the streams again and again, that, that's not really going to help you with this. Uh, so we are 
you know, in future we are also starting a new project, but this will be slightly in the drier part of the uh, state. This will be in Ma Marathwada, and it has been funded by uh, CARPE, which is a center for applied research and people's management. And we have Grindmaster Machines also as one of the sponsors. And this is a part of the Prakriti Research Fellowship that I have got. But I would like to recommend that we need long-term monitoring, which is completely lacking in not only in Odonets, but in many cases about the urban spaces. And action-based work and outreach is also something that you know we should really uh, take care of. People's participation in understanding and you know realizing the importance of any single taxa that you work on. So for that, uh, we have created a group called Dragonfly South Asia, and that's like a huge community of people, anyone who is interested in dragonflies. So we have around 9,000 people working across South Asia, and as I'm speaking, probably there were like there are some 10 to 20 observations already uploaded on a portal that we have created. So these are the people who are involved in the you know various work. Uh, that's Dr. Subramanyam who initiated this uh, this work. And then we have Dr. Vijay Barve, Neha, and Prasanjit helping me with a lot many other studies. Uh, Dr. Ankur Patwadhan is also actively involved, uh, you know, uh, related to the grants and providing the infrastructure. And Apeksha's uh, work basically resulted in the Odonata, Pune Odonata Phase 2 project. So that's all from me. Thank you.